Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It's 8 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I apologize for my apparel. Uh, it's going to be a very busy day. There's actually a, two more videos I'd like to make today. Uh, it is a it's going to be a balmy 95 degrees here in Connecticut today. It's probably already heading to, heading towards 80 at 8 a.m. here in Connecticut. So I apologize for the apparel, but all right, let's get into it. I already I already kind of promised you guys in the last video that I was going to talk about Dr. Fauci. I've been meaning to do this for a while. At the end of this video, too, it, not just about Dr. Fauci, but about the I believe it's called the fealty the fealty to Donald Trump uh, and anybody who opposes him how they're ostracized and attacked. Uh, that's that's it kind of at the end of this video. Because uh, that's the situation with Dr. Fauci now. We, we saw Josh Hawley, Hawley uh, calling for, I don't know, pretty much putting Dr. I wouldn't be surprised if they called for Dr. Fauci to be put in front of a firing squad. Because God forbid, he, he might have uh, rolled his eyes when Donald Trump was talking or something or disagreed with Donald Trump on this whole, on uh, a lot of things with this... Uh, the COVID-19 and uh so yes he's become one of the uh one of the attacked by anybody who dares speak badly of dear leader or disagrees all right let's get right into it I'm going to have the links down below I, I wanted to understand what's going on here with these emails uh the Wuhan uh, um, Institute of Virology whatever that, that that place is called all right I have no reason to, to defend Dr. Fauci. I have no, there's nothing in it for me. He's, you know, has nothing to do with my political beliefs or anything like that. To me, he seems like a, uh, he seems like a, a reliable, rational, intel very intelligent man, very compassionate man, uh, concerned with public health. That's what I get from it. All right. In the links down below, you'll see, I was trying to understand what's going on with these emails, you know, it, it almost sounds like he was trying to hide, or this is the way the right seems to spin it, that he was trying to hide uh, actually even money or emails between him and the Wuhan, the, the place, the, the Wuhan uh, Institute in China. And, uh, and he was trying to, to hide that it might have come out of there or, or something like that. This is what I got out of this, okay? First of all, Dr. Fauci was an amazingly overworked man. Apparently, over that last year in 2020, 2020, 2021, he was getting maybe four hours sleep. On average, he was answering 2,000 emails every day. Uh, you know, so I think I could understand. Uh, you know, if I had to answer 2,000 emails every day, I imagine that I might say something contradictory or something could be misconstrued. All right, this is what I got out of it. I didn't see any connection between Fauci and his, uh, what's it called, the uh, National Institute for uh, Allergy and Infectious Diseases. That He's the chief there. The way I understand this is they give grants to other universities, nonprofits, uh, Eco, Eco Health, Eco Health Alliance. I believe that is a nonprofit that got one of these grants for $3.4 million. I think their goal was to get samples of COVID-19 past uh, the, the first one and get samples. That's what it sounded like. So Dr. Fauci's Institute would give grants to other entities, American entities, to, to, to study, co collaborate on studying these viruses. What I got out of this is there's the possibility that Eco, Alliance, Eco Health Alliance then had some interaction with Wuhan, Wuhan Labs. All right. Uh, the emails in question, there's one that there's, you know, he was receiving 2,000 a day. I think the one that Josh Hawley and all the Republicans are pointing out, it, it, you know, you can't control what somebody else is going to send to you. It was somebody from Eco Health Alliance, not from the Wuhan labs. It was from Eco Health Alliance, the American nonprofit entity, thanking him for taking the heat off that it didn't come from a lab. Now, of course, Dr. Fauci would have no control, and I think his response was rather terse, terse too. 
Uh, you know, he wasn't, didn't seem like he was collab, collab, collaborating with uh, Eco Health Alliance. Um, you know, he had no control over this. So it sounds like Eco Health Alliance was thanking him for not making, for, for just his belief that this came from a natural source. Uh, there really, you know, there really was no need to send a, an email like that. But again, this had nothing to do with Dr. Fauci. I did read one email uh, Dr. Fauci put out to one of his subordinates, and it, it sounded like it sounded very important. Uh, it, it said something along the lines like uh, he was talking to a subordinate, and he said, "You have like one task today." That's to investigate the connection, kind of investigate any connections between Eco Health Alliance and Wuhan Labs and gain of function. Uh, I think Fauci has said there's no way that you can prove or disprove that Wuhan Labs was working on gain of function. Now, gain of function is weaponizing, weaponizing the virus, gaining function, uh, turning it into a weapon. Um, so this is this is what I got out of this. I'll leave, put the I'll put all the articles down below. Um, I don't see anything incriminating here at all. I don't. I see a man that was severely overworked, and again in this one email he he seemed concerned that the connection between Eco Health Alliance, this nonprofit that had gotten money from Fauci's institute and any connection to Wuhan Labs, and he wanted his subordinates to investigate this because he seemed concerned. And that's, that's what I got out of this. Okay, now, this is what I want to talk about. Everybody on the, the right here, like Josh Hawley, is calling for Dr. F Dr. Fauci to be, you know, drawn and quartered and uh, fired and resigned and, and put before a firing squad and all this other stuff. This is the, the, what we see. This is the scary thing we see. I believe it's called fealty, F-E-A-L-T-Y, the fealty to Donald Trump. Uh, I, I think also uh, the, the, the uh, saying, uh, the emperor has no clothes, uh, kind of uh, applies to this. It would seem that the Republican Party ha has altered, has morphed in into this worship of this one man, this one man who can do no wrong. And anybody that says the least disagrees or... or you know, God even rolls their eyes, you know, and becomes an enemy, enemy of the state. Uh, I want to take, take, for instance, Brad Raffensperger. The Georgia Republican legislature has voted to censure him because of his fecklessness. His fecklessness. Now, this is another new word. I'm, more, I'm learning so many new words today. Um, to me, like I said, I, I dealt for 20 years with liars and manipulators. I was one during my using. And let me tell you this. Brad Raffensperger seems like a good man. He's a Republican. He, he still, uh, still supports Donald Trump, even though Trump wants to throw him under the bus. He's the one that disagreed, the Secretary of State of Georgia, that disagreed. He felt, he honestly felt, after checking and rechecking and recounting, that the votes in Georgia were accurate. Remember when Trump uh, said, yeah, you're just going to need to find, what, what was it, 70,000 votes. Just say you made a mistake. Remember that, Brad Raffensperger? They're still, you know, they're, they're, the Republican Party is still looking to, to hang him out to dry. Because he believed in the job. He seemed to do a good job, and he believed in the job he did. This is the scary thing that's going on in the Republican Party. It's this worship of one man. He's always right. This arrogant narcissist. God forbid anyone says anything, uh, anything, you know, to make him look bad. One last thing I want to bring bring up: Mike Pence this very this weekend was just in New Hampshire, and he's still speaking highly of Donald Trump, even though Donald Trump called him a uh, P blank 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 S Y uh, with the whole sixth thing. Uh, okay, but he said this one thing. This is just last week, this weekend in New Hampshire. He agreed. He said he's very proud of everything that he and Trump did over the last four years. He's still speaking highly of Trump. But he said this one thing. He said, I don't think me and Donald Trump will ever see eye to eye on what happened on that day in January. That's all he said. 
Everything else was glowing. You know, we did, you know, that he and Trump did so much good and all sorts of stuff. But he just said that. I don't think we'll see eye to eye on that day. Well, I imagine not, you know, if we remember seeing the gallows in front of, uh, and the chants from that crowd, the people chanting. So I think, I think uh, Mike Pence is being very reserved in saying, in just putting it that way, that we won't see eye to eye. And Republicans and, and the entire right is attacking Pence already for simply saying that, that he and Trump won't see eye to eye. This is what scares me. This is the danger in this, that nobody can disagree with the almighty Trump. If Trump does no wrong. Trump speaks all, all, nothing but truth. Everything Trump says is law and golden. This is this, this, I don't know why people don't, people that uh, are Trump supporters don't see this. It's all about the man. Where on the left, I think we see uh, about ideas, about more fairness and equality, especially, and less danger with these ongoing uh, things that are happening across the country every single day, multiple times a day, involving the Second Amendment. All right, and I still have so much more to talk about. Next video, I want to talk about how CRT and the relationship I realized between the 12-step program I went through with alcohol and drug addiction, the 12-step program, and CRT and similarities and differences and how to move forward. All right, you guys have a great Sunday. I'll be back later with another video.